Hey guys, so today I'm going to render another scene with the RTX 4080 Super using Turbo Render, which is a feature of the Turbo Tools add on. And if you're not sure what Turbo Tools is, basically it's an add on for Blender that reduces render time whilst giving higher quality results and also comes with some really cool tools for the compositor as well. So we're going to be using this Evermotion scene, link to their store in the description below. And to get started, I'm going to set up Turbo Tools. So firstly, I'll set a Turbo Tools cache location. I'll make sure Turbo Render is disabled. And then I'm going to render one of the scenes. I'm going to go with this interior one because it gives me an opportunity to show you some problems that you might run into. And all of the interior ones, by the way, are using 1,000 samples. And all the exterior ones are using 600. So let's go with this, this one here. I'm going to remove the keyframes because Turbo Render needs to modify this at render time. So make sure you remove those if you're following along. The second thing I want to do in this scene, just go to the compositor. You'll see what um, Evermotion have done is set up a compositor network for each camera in the scene. But this is a bad idea because basically what happens is even though you're only rendering one frame, it's going to calculate all of these compositor nodes. And this can take quite a long time, particularly if you're not in the GPU mode of the compositor. So you, the compositor's now got a GPU mode. So if you're in CPU mode, which is still a little bit more stable, um, then it's going, to take, it's going to take ages. So just make sure that any nodes that you don't want to use, whose output you aren't interested in, you mute them before you do a render. So I'll just mute all the ones that I'm not going to use here. We only need to keep those that have been set up for frame eight. So I'll just select and mute all the others. And now it should render much faster. In the render settings, I'll make sure Turbo Render is disabled, which it is. And then we'll, make, we'll just have a look, make sure that the samples are still set to 1000, which they are. And the denoiser that Evermotion have set up is Open Image Denoiser with the highest quality settings. And I'm also going to turn on Use GPU just to demonstrate that even though Turbo Render doesn't yet use GPU, uh, it will in Blender 4.3, but at the moment it doesn't, it doesn't matter because it will still destroy the result we're going to get with the denoiser in the render panel. So let's do a quick render. Or oh, actually, I'll cancel that. I'll just turn off lock interface so that I can uh, move things around while we render. And then we'll start render again. Okay, so that's finished in 1 minute and 24 seconds. So let's save this. So this is 1000 samples, that's the default. And now we'll try it with Turbo Render. So let's go into Turbo Render and we'll enable it. We're going to tell it, let's just have a look at the scene. We're going to tell it what's in the scene. So which, what sort of things are visible to the camera and what type of scene is it? So we've got interior scene, so it is an interior scene. Turn that on. Uh, optimize HDRI. We have got a HDRI, so I'll leave that enabled because if it's a big HDRI, then this will reduce memory quite a bit. And we've got transmission, we've got glass here, and we've got glass here as well. And we don't seem to have got any emission. Subsurface scattering, I'm not sure, but if I see any problems, then I'll know I need to turn that on. We have got a world environment, but if we turn this on, it's only visible behind glass. So it's only behind transmission. So I'll tick this box as well. We've got no heavy depth of field, so don't need to enable that one. No volumes, and that should be fine. So all I need to do is choose a quality that I want. So the denoising mode, I'm going to go with high, because it's quite a low resolution. It's 1920 by 1400. If it was any bigger than that, like 4K, I'd probably set this to draft rapid because it's usually more than adequate on higher resolution images. And it's also a lot faster to compute as well. So the sample preset, this is where we can specify the actual quality of, of the sample. So how many samples is it going to do? Now, if we use crap, with the, with the settings we've got, it's going to equal 16 samples. So this always changes based on the scene and the options you've got chosen. But for this particular one, that's going to be 16 samples. So let's do a render. Oh, cancel that. I need to make sure I change slots, otherwise we're going to lose the original image to compare to. And then render. So let's have a look. And you can see that at 16 samples, 
we're not getting much detail compared to the thousand sample version on reflections on that bottle. So there's a thousand, and this is 16. You can see there's a big difference. So we do need to increase the samples a little bit to get that detail back. So I'm going to draw a render region around the worst area in the scene with Control B. So that's going to turn the render region on for us. And then we'll choose Crop to Render Region. And that'll make sure that we're only denoising that one area as well. So let's choose the next slot. And I'm going to call this one Turbo Light Tree. Because I want to see if I can keep 16 samples if I turn on the Cycles Light Tree option, which we can find by scrolling down to the lighting area in the Cycles Render Settings. Turn that on, and then we'll give it a try. And basically what it does, it stops Cycles sampling lights that are having virtually no impact on the scene. So it just speeds your render up a bit. And it can also improve your uh, reflections, I've found. So let's give that a render. And looking at this, it has made a slight improvement. If we look at the original 16 samples, it's a bit darker on the bottle. Whereas here, you can see it's a bit lighter. So darker on that one, a bit lighter on this one. But it's still not good enough. So what we'll do, we'll try the scrambling distance as well, which is under the advanced settings for cycles. Again, this is not a turbo tools option, but I just thought I'd give it a quick try. And just pay attention to the playhead down here. You'll see it's going to jump to the next frame and then back. And this is because basically we've got temporal stabilization data turned on in the turbo tools options at the top here. Now we don't really need this on because what it does is it generates vector data which requires cycles to look at the next and previous frame. And that can slow down scene compilation a little bit. And the only time you'd use that is if you've rendered an animation and then after rendering, you go into the turbo panel in the compositor down to the publishing section and you can turn on the remove temporal flicker option. So we're not going to do that. We'll just disable it, render again, and scene compilation should be a little bit faster. And it's reduced the overall render time by three seconds, which is, uh, you know, it's better than nothing. So let's do a quick comparison. So although the light tree option did have a positive impact, adding the scrambling distance hasn't really made much of a difference at all. So what we'll do, we'll increase the samples now. And let's go with high. And we'll do another render. You can see we are getting that detail back. So there's before which took a little bit longer, 18 seconds, because we had the uh, temporal stabilization data still being generated. But now you can see we're getting a much better result with those extra samples. I think that's probably sufficient. So let's just see, we'll, un we'll do the entire scene now. So we'll turn off render region, then we'll render again. So let's have a look, 39.93 seconds. We'll do a comparison. So this is turbo height. We'll get rid of these ones in, in the middle now. Right, so that one, this is a thousand, and this is turbo high. And you can actually see we've got better results, much better results, in fact. For example, if we come in here, just look at the area on the wall here. You see the reflections we're getting. Even on, on here, look, we're getting reflections of the rack. If we look at the thousand sample version, they've completely gone. We've got none of those reflections. And, and that's, that was in 128. Ignore the seven seconds. That's basically because I started rendering on the wrong uh, slot and then pressed escape. So that seven seconds is just how long it took to calculate the uh, compositor. All right, so look at the quality difference. We've got all the reflections on the wall here that are just missing. With, even with a thousand samples are completely missing. Uh, let's look at some other areas, maybe some textures. So look at the bucket here. This is with Turbo Render in 39 seconds. And this is with a 1,000 samples without Turbo Render. And we can see the textures look better, but I've just noticed that the Turbo High version seems to be a little bit blown out. And that's because we use the light tree and the um, scrambling distance. So let's just turn those off and do a quick render again. So 37 seconds, and now you see we're getting the same light. Whereas before, it was uh, quite blown out. So if you're going to use those options, you're probably going to need to do some modifications in your post, so in the compositor, after you render, to uh, bring those levels back there. But anyway, let's do a comparison. Let's go full screen.
So 37 seconds. And let's just look over here. We've still got the reflections on the wall that we're not getting with a thousand samples. Again, you can see they're completely gone. Um, let's look at maybe some textures. So with a thousand samples, let's look at this wood. And now let's look at turbo. A massive difference. Look at the quality, the, the amount of textures retention we've got there. So let's zoom in on this chair. And we'll look at the thousand sample version. It's quite smoothed out. If we compare this with turbo render, you can see we've got all that detail back. And we'll zoom in on this area on the wall. So it's very detailed here. Thousand samples, it's gone. Turbo, we've maintained it all. And one thing I don't like is that turbo render has increased the brightness of these plants and it makes them look a little bit unrealistic compared to this thousand sample version. Now the reason is, it's nothing wrong with turbo render, it's because the a multipasty noiser is more sensitive to bad values. In materials and I'll show you how to fix that shortly but let's just continue doing some comparisons and maybe we'll come over here so here's a thousand samples and then if we look at the turbo you see we've got much more detail on the wood but also if we look at these bowls you'll see we've actually got all the uh, specular reflections that we've lost completely even at a thousand samples without turbo render Turbo, so we can still see it clearly. Um, what else? The bucket is all blurred, the textures. And then on Turbo, we've still got it all there. So there we go. Turbo Render has basically rendered the same scene more than twice as fast, and it's given us better results. And just before I go, I want to show you what you can do if you do find any problems like we had with those plants where the, they were showing too bright. If we look at the materials we've got, one of them is going to have translucency. So let's look at this one. You can see we've got translucency on there. Basically, multipasty noises in cycles run into problems with translucency if there are high values going in and the principle has been added to a translucent material. So let's just go inside this group. You can see we're adding together two shaders. One's the translucent, and one is the material coming in, which is this principal BSDF. And they're both receiving this same texture here, but one of them is being pumped up to a value of two. So when the color pass gets multiplied with the diffuse indirect and direct, then it's going to be a much brighter value than expected, and you're going to get those bright pixels. If you're not using a multipass denoiser, it only denoises the combined pass. So it's not too important. You don't get the negative effect. So if you don't want to fix it in the material, what you can do is go into the turbo render and just choose the draft rapid denoise mode and turn off enhanced textures. And that will basically make it not multipass denoising and that will fix it. But then of course, you're gonna lose all the benefits of having the texture enhancement. So let's put it back to high. And it's a very easy fix. Basically, we just need to modify this value here to make sure that it's not going, it's not being pushed, you know, very high when those two shaders get added together. So we need to, we can't modify this because the material is a linked material to another blend file. And we can't just click this, it won't work. We need to first make the object local as well. So we go into the data panel for the object, and at the top, where it says which geometry it's using, we'll just click on the chain here to make this local, and now, we can make the material local as well. And then we can modify this value, maybe put it at something like 0.5 perhaps, and then we'll do the same for the principal, 0.5. And then if we render again, you can see that the plant on the right is no longer excessively bright, if we compare it to before, just by making sure that those color values, those texture values, didn't exceed one, after the shaders were added together. Alright, so hopefully that's useful. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.